Hare Krishna devotees, please accept our humble obeisance of Sokha Shishura Prabhupada. Welcome devotees to today's morning class and this morning we will be discussing from Chaitanya Charitamrita, Adi Lila chapter 3 verse 98 and the chapter is entitled The External Reasons for the Appearance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. We are very happy to have His Holiness Chandramani Swami with us. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to you, all glories to Shri Prabhupada. Hare Krishna, my obeisances to you and all the devotees. Thank you for the opportunity. Be fitting right before Janmashtami Maharaj. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, a couple of days ago. Be happy that you could give the class this morning. Much. And it is all yours, March, whenever you're, you're ready to start. Give the class on, on CC, right? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. All right. Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gora Bhakti Vrindam Loka Gati Teki Acharya Karuna Ridaya Vichara Karena Lokera Kaiche Hita Hoya Translation. Seeing the activities of the world, the Acharya felt compassion and began to ponder how he could act for the people's benefit. Hmm. Therefore, this sort of serious interest in the welfare public makes one a bona fide Acharya. Acharya doesn't exploit his followers. Since the Acharya is a confidential servant of the Lord, his heart is always full of compassion for humanity and its suffering. He knows that all suffering is due to the absence of devotional service of the Lord. And therefore, he always tries to find ways to change people's activities, making them favorable for the attainment of devotion. That is the qualification of the Acharya. Although Sri Advaita Prabhu himself was powerful enough to do the work as a submissive servitor, he thought without the personal appearance of the Lord, no one can improve the fallen condition of society. In the grim clutches of Maya, the first class prisoners of the material world wrongly think themselves happy because they are rich, powerful, resourceful, and so on. These foolish creatures do not know that they are nothing but the play dolls in the hands of material nature and that at any moment, Material nature's pitiless entries can crush to dust all of their plans for godless activity. Such few foolish prisoners cannot see that, however, they improve their position by artificial means. Calamities of repeated birth, death, disease, and old age are always beyond the jurisdiction of their control. Foolish as they are, they neglect these major problems of life and busy himself with false things that cannot help them solve their real problems of life. They know that they do not they do not want to suffer death or the pangs of disease in old age, but under the influence of the illusionary energy, they are grossly negligent, therefore they do, do nothing to solve the problems. This is called Maya. People held in the grip of Maya are thrown into oblivion after death, and a result of their karma in the next life, they become dogs or gods. Almost most of them become dogs. Become gods in the next life, they must engage in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Otherwise, they are sure to become dogs or hogs in terms of the laws of nature. The third class prisoners, being less material opulent than the first class prisoners, Endeavor to imitate them, for they also have no information of the real nature of their imprisonment. Thus, they are also misled by the illusion of material nature. The function of the charya, however, is to change the activities of both the first class and third class prisoners for their real benefit. This endeavor makes him a very dear devotee of the Lord, who says clearly in the Bhagavad Gita that no one in human society is dearer to him than a devotee who constantly engages in his service by finding ways to preach the message of Godhead for the real benefit of the world. The so-called acharyas of the age of Kali are more concerned with exploiting the resources of their followers than mitigating their misery. But Sri Advaita Prabhu, as an ideal acharya, was concerned with 
improving the conditions of the world situation. Namaste, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So one of the three external reasons for the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, is here is Sri Advaita Acharya, who has preceded Lord Chaitanya in the appearance on the earth He's quite elderly. He's actually appeared 52 years before Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared. But he is an Acharya. And, and he is actually the Supreme Lord himself. He is actually Mahavishnu. But he's playing the role of a devotee of the Lord, just like Lord Chaitanya. And in that role, he is the best of all devotees because he is thinking only of the welfare of the conditioned souls. Um, therefore, although as Prabhupada indicates, he's quite competent to do the work himself, but he's not thinking he is. And so he's calling for the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna himself, to appear in his form as a devotee of the Lord to teach the process of pure devotional service and save the conditioned souls for their suffering. Here we get, we get a little insight of the ignorance that goes on in this world as life. People constantly confront this, these sufferings of old age. Disease is very prominent, and there's always some new disease appearing on the horizon, either by people's karma or by an arrangement by the demons, either way, there's always news diseases coming. But in any case, uh, people somehow or other think, you know, pharmaceutical products and medicines is the way we counteract these things. And if we can do that, somehow we can go on in life. But nobody can get rid of disease because it's part of the material energy. This idea of removing disease altogether is not a possibility. It's just the way the material energy works. A disease is part of living in the material world. Old age, debilitation, deficiency, uh, defi and then unable to function in a lot of capacities and ultimately a breakdown of the entire body eventually. And of course, they're trying to overcome death in so many ways, but their ways are all mechanical and useless. And so, but people in general try to ignore these things because they know they can't solve them and go on with their foolish ways and trying to become happy in this material world. It's like, yeah, it's like a prisoner who is trying to be happy instead of a jail. <laughs> if you want to be happy, get out of the jail. Don't stay in the jail and try to create a, an arrangement inside the jail. Sometimes we see that, that prisoners who are locked up for an extended period of time, they want to improve their conditions. So they do something. Somehow to improve their conditions, and they get on the good behavior roll, so they can get a little bit of extra privileges that take time to get, and so they can have more freedom within the jail. But they're still in the jail. Uh, so this is the material disease 
that people are in the material world suffering the three form mysteries of life constantly and all their plans for improvement are eventually crushed by the waves of time and even whatever they do even in the short run doesn't solve the problem so the problem is uh money the solution to the problem is that Krishna is explaining that go back home back to Godhead that is the solution for all problems and it's the perfection of one's desire to become happy perfectly and completely and inter eternally also but for whatever reason the conditioned souls are an illusion and can't see the, the actual solution or they won't accept the solution so here we find a person who takes up the role of the acharya. The word acharya means one who teaches by example, and not only speaks, but also um, acts in the same way that they are speaking. In other words, they speak according to scripture, they speak according to the word of God, they're also a follower of another Acharya who has established himself as being fixed in pure devotional service, who knows the scriptures. And they're, they have, due to their natural development in devotional service, there is a certain element that comes when one becomes somewhat uh, situated on the higher levels of devotion and service, we might say, when they become fixed in the process, they start to see that the real business is to try to help others get out of that condition. And so they're compassionate and they make arrangements. You can see his divine grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. He was... Uh, he also said, you know, I was living in Vrindavan and I was there in the Radha Damodar temple. I was happy and I had everything I needed. I was worshiping the Lord. But my spiritual master has given me this instruction to take this message to the fallen conditioned souls in the Western world. So on account of his desire, I have ex accepted that same desire and now have given up all of my so-called comforts or my comforts in order and came to the Western world to try to make a difference in the lives of the conditioned souls. <laughs> and to save one person is not so easy because generally it's like it's almost like being a veterinarian. We will use the example of a doctor, but I think that the example of a veterinarian is more appropriate because a veterinarian has to treat the animal. The animal is suffering from whatever it's suffering from. And they can't understand that the doctor is trying to help them. <laughs> so sometimes the animal resists the doctor when the doctor is trying to you know, administer the cure to the diseased animal. But the, the, the veterinarian knows what needs to be done, so he has to somehow or other work in such a way as to get that medicine into the, into the animal, although the animal can't appreciate it or understand it. So it's like that preaching in the material world. Um, people may even... Uh, perfunctory agree that they are you know not happy and they're looking for some better situation to improve their life but when it comes to actually taking up a regular process of worship to the supreme personality of godhead they think it's too much or they can't see the benefit of it of course one cannot see the benefit of something that is beneficial 
that is spiritual unless one actually experiences them to some degree. And therefore, the, the devotees of the Lord who have are working on behalf of the, the mission of the Lord have to come up with so many different ideas on how to inject this medicine of uh, freedom to the conditioned souls who somehow are always trying to resist. <laughs> or even if they can't, they don't resist, they can't understand how to accept it and to apply it also. It's difficult. Therefore, Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita that one who teaches this message of the Bhagavad Gita to the to the devotees, to the conditioned souls, to the devotees, um, is very dear to me. No one is more dear. So actually, those who actually take that uh, austerity of putting aside their own, not putting aside, but somehow or other, yeah, making their mission the mission of the Lord. Uh, the Supreme Lord comes to the material world to do that himself. So he comes to uplift the uh, conditioned souls to give pleasure to the devotees, to remove your religion in the world, and to reestablish real religion. So the Lord does that. He doesn't have to do that. So he can do that simply by sending his representative. And he does. But sometimes he personally comes. Because when he personally comes, the whole atmosphere becomes purified. Just like it says Mother Earth. She, when after Krishna left the planet, after being here for 125 years, she's lamenting her fate. It says that the suffering that Mother Earth experienced due to the separation from the Lord after his disappearance was greater than the suffering that the queens in Dwarka experienced upon Krishna's departure. And as mentioned in the Bhagavatam, in the very beginning of the 17th chapter of the first canto. So the Earth was in a very jolly, in very uh, auspicious uh, arrangement by the presence of the Lord. But when the Lord left, her happiness knew no, knew no bounds. And that works also with material life. The more something brings you happiness, the greater that misery will be once it leaves you. So that is how things go. But in the spiritual world, this separation actually increases one's, uh, one's love for Krishna. Like that. And so sometimes we speak about preaching, reaching, and um, doing whatever one can think of to reach the conditioned souls. Mm -hmm. But it's very important that they understand the basic principle is that uh, material life is meant for suffering, not meant for enjoyment. There is no enjoyment in material life. We accept some pitiable little relief suffering as some type of pleasure. And sometimes we're satisfied with that little pittance of uh, relief from some suffering. There's one story. There's two. There's two different ones. One story where uh, uh, Prabhupada tells a story of uh, Gopal who is uh, the servant of the king. And uh, the king is now in the palace. 
and he uh, he uh, just got the word that his wife, the queen, just had a baby boy. So um, now he's going around the palace, and everyone's congratulating him, and he's happy, and he's meeting everyone. And uh, it's a nice experience. So he comes to Gopal. Gopal is the king's jester. He's his, you know, kings sometimes have a very uh, arduous uh, service. They have to do a lot of administration. So they need to laugh once in a while. So they keep a jester, you know, um, you know break the ice every once in a while. So the king came up to Gopal and said, Gopal. Gopal said, yes. My wife, the queen, she just gave birth to a beautiful baby boy. <laughs> and Gopal's immediate response was, wow, my dear king, <clears throat> I'm so happy I could pass stool. That was his response. <laughs> and, uh, and the king looked at him like, what are you saying you nonsense <laughs> and then he left the next day uh the king had to go on to a, a hunting trip with uh gopal so they were in a boat and they were traveling along the river and at one point the king had to take care of business so he's told Gopal pulled the boat over to the side. I need to go into the woods. And uh, Gopal said, yes, okay, just now coming. But he didn't do anything. He continued to row the boat on the, on the water. After a few moments, the king became a little overwhelmed and said, Gopal, come on, pull the boat over to the side. I need to take care of nature. Yes, 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 just now coming. But he continued on the. Finally, after some time, the king was really feeling the pressure. So he started to yell out, Gopal, pull the boat over. And immediately, Gopal pulled the boat over. The king went into the woods, came back out. King has a smile on his face. And, and uh, Gopal says, King, how do you feel? King said, I feel happy. And then he remembered what Gopal said yesterday. <laughs> so <laughs> Prabhupada said, in one couple of lectures, he said, pretty much this is the happiness in the material world. Not much. <laughs> it's a relief from suffering. That's about it. So that's a nice indication or a, a pretty clear indication what material life is like. Mo material life is mostly counteracting the sufferings in this world. People are thinking that they're becoming happy, but all they're doing is counteracting suffering. One type of suffering after another, and it's either one kind of counteracting another. Sometimes when they can't counteract anything, they go to sleep just to get rid of the misery. Other people take drugs. Others go on vacations and do something because misery is there. This is the material world. So especially in Kali Yuga, it's even more so. It's being exacerbated by the, the age with so many defaults and deficiencies in the population in this age because of the age of Kali. So anyone who can... Uh, work on behalf of the Lord and save or help or show some concern to the suffering, to the conditioned souls, becomes very dear to Krishna. And um, Krishna explains that many times. He says, the hey, one who preaches this message is very dear to me. So this is Srila Prabhupada's uh, request for all of his followers that we take up this mantle of uh, trying to reach the conditioned souls with this message of Krishna consciousness. Um, sometimes we formalize the idea of preaching, sitting on a Vyasasana, or giving a lecture, but that's just one way. 
There are many ways to somehow or other reach the conditioned souls with this message. And this is being, I remember when I was in Canada many years ago, we had one particular seminar and the seminar was to think of different ways by which one can uh, dis distribute this message of Krishna consciousness. And we came up with close to 40 different ways that one can employ in order to preach Krishna consciousness, different methods of outreach. <laughs> so anyone and everyone is required to take up that message in some way or other. And if, you could, if we could imagine if every devotee in our movement started to do that, Lord Chaitanya's movement would be here very fast, <laughs> every town and village. So uh, if you want to solve your problems, one of the ways to stop, to stop your problems is don't try to solve them. Simply try to become Krishna conscious and give Krishna conscious to others because take on the problems of others and that way you solve your own problems. When you make others happy, you also become happy all automatically by the arrangement of the Lord. And there's no better way than to give people Krishna consciousness. When Prabhupada opened the uh, center in New York back in the 1965, he found a, the devotees found a little storefront. It was a former curio shop that used to sell various types of trinkets, knickknacks, unusual gadgets, things from different places around the world that were quite uncommon. <laughs> so now it had become the center for the International Society of Krishna Consciousness Little Storefront. And the name of the shop before was called Matchless Gift. And uh, so uh, when the devotees were renovating the place, they started to take down the sign, <clears throat> Matchless Gift, the name of the old shop. The Prabhupada stopped them and said, no, you leave that. This is what we have. We, we have the Matchless Gift, that gift that cannot be matched. Devotion to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, pure devotion to the to Krishna and Vrindavan. <clears throat> So, yeah, these are indications that there is no greater achievement. One, as Prabhupada says here, uh, the first class prisoners in the material world think they themselves happy because they are rich, powerful, resourceful. But these foolish creatures do not know they're nothing but play dolls in the hands of material nature. And at the any moment, their material nature's intrigues, pitiless intrigues can crush to death all of their plans for godless activities. Material energy is known as precarious. It's uncertain. Nobody knows what will happen next. One can plan and one can, can think of that, but material nature is just like them. All of a sudden, you could be driving on the highway. <laughs> and all of a sudden, the whole world is upside down. There's an accident or something. And just yesterday, or a couple of days ago, I was watching a video. And then all of a sudden, a live news report jumped in and, and preempted the video. And this was a... Somebody had hijacked a car in Florida and America, and now there was a police chase. <clears throat> and they were filming this police chase, which was live. We were watching it. <clears throat> and at one point, <clears throat> the uh, persons who stole the car, they uh, wanted to switch cars and steal another car. So a guy was stopped at a red light. So the guys jump out and all of a sudden, this guy in his other car, he's just there driving his car along and somebody's pointing an AK-47 at him and telling him to get out of his car. <laughs> so 
this man could have never even dreamt that that would happen that morning when he went to work. <laughs> but it did. So life is like that, you know, all of a sudden there's a guy, there's a, you know, a criminal pointing a gun at you for no, for whatever reason. So material life is crazy. It's so uncertain. And of course, then there's miseries by higher powers, miseries by other living entities, miseries by coming by our body and mind. You know, if we're not careful. We can fall and break our hip, or leg, or something. <laughs> It's just the way this material world is. It's just full of uncertainty. And there's so many ways that one from you know, experience that the whole change in one's routine. This is the way material might be. <laughs> it's, uh, it's full of uncertainty. This world is so uncertain. So no one should think that they can be happy here playing with the uncertainties of material energy. So therefore, the only the only solution is to become Krishna conscious, and that's why the, the devotees are making an effort to somehow or other spread this movement everywhere, because they know this is the only solution to the problems of life: Krishna consciousness. When we say God consciousness also, and here one who works. To assist the Lord in his mission, as Prabhupada said, do what I'm doing. And Prabhupada made that statement in a very sweeping way. He said, do what I'm doing, which meant that you know, I'm preaching Krishna consciousness. You should do it also. Not that we could do the same level as Prabhupada, but we have the example of how the Lord sees we have the example from the Ramayan. When, uh, when the monkey soldiers, under the guidance of Lord Ram, wanted to build this bridge across the ocean, they were throwing these boulders into the ocean, and Ram was writing his names on these boulders, and uh, the boulders were floating. It was actually, they were building this stone bridge, which was eventually became 88 miles wide and 8,000 miles long. And one little, it's mentioned one little squirrel, squirrel wanted to help out. So he wanted to help the Lord. And so he started kicking some grains of sand into the ocean to kind of assist in the building of the bridge. So Hanuman was there. And he was thinking, what is this squirrel doing? So he, he, he said, my dear squirrel, please move out of the way. <laughs> You're just, this is man's work, you know. <laughs> so uh, Ram saw that. And he, he, he uh, rebuked Anuman. He said, Anuman, he is doing as much as you are doing. You're working to his your capacity. He is working to his capacity, that is bhakti. Bhakti is to give whatever we can, and that is the element of how we worship the Lord. And it's not that we have to have great abilities to do things. That's nice too, but ultimately, we have to see Krishna has given us some intelligence, some resources, some, some facilities, Something he's given that we can use to somehow or other spread Krishna consciousness. And it's not about, you know, who you are or what you have. It's just about using whatever Krishna gives you in his service, particularly in the mood of spreading Krishna consciousness. So you see here, even the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Advaita Charya, with God himself, Mahavishnu, he's actually wants to, his heart is burning with compassion for the fallen conditioned souls, that he wants to do something. But he knows it's the work of Sri Krishna himself. And so now he's making 
his attempt to worship the Lord, to bring the Lord, and that'll be revealed through the rest of the chapter. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you so much, Marshal. Such a wonderful class. Um, really nice points and would like to ask devotees. I'm going to stop sharing. And I can, if I can request devotees to please um, open, um, turn on your videos so that we can see each other and Marsh can see us. We'd like to ask devotees if you have any questions, any comments, clarification, please uh, do raise your hand so I can call upon you in order if, um, or you can put in the chat and I'll be happy to, to read it. Marsh, I have a question and um, you touched upon this uh, point of um, when we have problems, don't bother solving it. Just help other devotees and our problems will be solved. And um, <laughs> <laughs> that's if it, and and my and the, the next the point that I wanted to ask Maharaj is that in today's consciousness, and I've seen that not only in the uh, in the in the karmi bull, but even in the devotee atmosphere in the devotee world, you know, that that the consciousness is let me satisfy myself first then I'll think of service later and and I see that you know sometimes and so how can we we develop this understanding or knowledge of mood Maharaj that you know uh you know serve first then quote unquote satisfy myself later or something like that because it's the other way around now a real what is our real problem a real problem is that we're looking for happiness. So we're looking to adjust the material world so we can avoid misery. So every living entity is part and parcel of Krishna. And therefore, every living entity is connected with each other through the process of serving the Lord. So it says, you know, to see yourself in others is actually to see yourself. To see yourself in others is actually to see yourself. In other words, we all have that same desire to become happy. And as devotees, we know what is the standard by which happiness comes about, which is devotional service. When you help others, you're also helping yourself. Uh, the example it was a really nice example when uh, one political person, I can't remember his name, he came to see Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And uh, he approached Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, he was, Ma Maharaj was in his place. And he said, uh, he was very respectful, he had, he had known Maharaj. And he said, Maharaj, I've come, I have some questions. And Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati said, well, right, at this moment, I don't have time for your questions, but go to the pujaris and they'll answer your questions. So he left, went to the pujaris, and the pujaris were polishing the brass and the silver that for the deities. So he came and he said, you know, Guru Maharaj to send me with questions, most my questions to you. He said, yeah, we'll help you, but we have this service. So... If, why don't you help us polish? We need some more help. And then after that, we'll answer your questions. So he sat down and he's working, he's polishing, he's getting into it. After some time, and all the work was done, the Pajari said, oh, okay. You want to ask your questions now? He said, thank you, I don't have any questions. <laughs> he got up. <laughs> And then he went back out, and then Bhakti Siddhanta and Saraswati noticed he was leaving. He said, did the Pujaris answer your questions? They said, oh, yes, Maharaj, thank you. That's a, you know, that's an indication that, you know, if you stay engaged in devotional service, <laughs> all your problems are solved. Even if there's some little difficulties here and there, they all... They come and go. We just have to tolerate them. But it's devotional service that keeps our consciousness above the material energy, fixed in Krishna, fixed in sir, trying to serve Krishna. So that's an art, but it's easily easily learned by the instructions of the spiritual master. Stay engaged in devotional service. 
Marge, is it? I'm, I, I, I've heard that pastime, and I'm, and I'm so happy that you you repeated that pastime again. And what's coming to my mind is, does that actually? I, I, this is going to sound a very weird question, Marge, but does that consciousness still exist? <laughs> because I don't come across that. Devotees don't come and tell me they did. After a while, no, but I still have that question, Mataji. I mean, even after doing five hours of service, they still don't care. I, I guess they were thinking of the question while they were doing the service instead of thinking of the service. I think so, Maharaj. I think so. Yeah. Well, sometimes, sometimes the devotees just say, well, actually, it's not really important. I've seen that before. They once they get into devotional service, then they start seeing that their their questions, which they thought was has to be answered, was not so important. Marta, I remember uh, an incident, and I've mentioned this in my classes many times, and this was back in Gita Nagri in the nineties, and um, one devotee was. Uh, going through some challenges materially i think and uh at the time we were cooking in the kitchen and there was a pot that we needed because it was such a big pot that was burnt and needed to be scrubbed and this devotee we asked this devotee to scrub the pot and he was really burnt and i remember at the end uh, we were waiting for him to finish the, scrubbing the pot so we can use the pot <laughs> but when we went over he was taking his sweet time and we asked him, we said, Prabhu, you know, we really need the pot. He says, the pot is so dirty. I'm scrubbing it, but Krishna is showing me how dirty my heart is. That stayed with me for a long time. Yeah, it's true. They say if you wash pots, you clean your heart. If you clean the temple floor, you're cleaning your, the temple of your heart. It's not a, just as some eulogy or analogy. It's actually... A real experience. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you. Yes, Mother Sri Devi, go ahead. Thank you, Ansia. My humble obeisance to Maharaj. All glories to Prabhupada. I was uh, trying to just comment a little bit on what uh, Anusia was saying about this. Don't try to solve your problems. And I was wanting to say, Anusia, whole of last year, practically Guru Maharaj has been dinning that into my head that don't worry about your problems. Just get on with devotional service. And I couldn't accept it. I would keep on saying, I would first solve my problem. I would first solve my problem. Now, somehow, by Guru Maharaj's mercy, I'm getting it. I'm getting more opportunities for service. And the problem doesn't seem all that big of a problem anymore because now I'm getting resolved more in devotional service. So it's not so anxiety-inducing as it was last year. So really, it is only by the mercy of the spiritual master that we can you know, get out of the entanglement. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. That is so true. Keep going. <laughs> that means more service, Sri Devi. <laughs> I'm very happy. Actually, I'm very happy. I used to think, no, first I must solve my problems, then I can engage in devotion. But my problems are never going to end. They'll always be there. And I'm actually getting happier because I'm getting more opportunities for service. <laughs> You know, Sri Devi, it's interesting you said that because last night one devotee called me and Han Maharaj knows this devotee, Jit, uh, Jit Mitra Govinda Das. Um, he called me last night with us with something with service and uh, he asked me, Mataji, is your plate get getting a bit lighter? I said, it never gets lighter. It gets loaded and then unloaded and then something else gets loaded on. <laughs> it, it doesn't. He says, I said, yeah, it, it one goes off and then it comes on again. I, and he says, oh, my God, because his aim, I, I, I think he, he's always concerned about me because I'm so busy. But he's, his aim is, how can I make your plate? I said, you can make it light, but something will come on again. <laughs> Just how it is. I, yeah. I, I remember Mother Vatalila's comment where she says, service begets more service. So Yeah, that's, that's the Lord's mercy. Absolutely, Marge. Thank you. Any other questions from devotees? This is such a wonderful topic. And right before Janmastami, I mean, wow. 
amazing, amazing points. Marsh, that there is a point in the, wait, I think I missed something in the chat. Give me one second. Hold on. Yeah, there's two comments there. Right. Thank you, Aliana. I just missed your comment. Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisance. It's all good, Shishu. Prabhupada, can we say that the Acharya sees souls as children to be guided to God with what feelings otherwise? What's the last part there? Hmm. Can we say that the Acharyas see souls as children to be guided to God with what feelings otherwise? What does that last statement mean? I don't know what feeling. Yeah. Eliana, can you explain a little bit? I'm, I'm trying to understand your question too. She's typing it, Marge, because she's actually traveling. So she's typing her question. Can we say that the Acharya sees souls as children to be guided to God? I'm not understanding that part of it. That's a nice little statement, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It is. And I really want to know what she means. because Yeah, it's yeah that... Um... The vision of the, you know, the the preacher or the acharya is that these are children of the Lord, and they're uh, they're lost in the material world. So he's thinking that if I can guide them back to their father, that's more like a Christian. Uh, using Christian terminology, but it's it's correct. It's one way of seeing. Thank you very much. Sorry, but I there are more uh, sound, but I understand. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad we were able to um, understand your question, Eliana. That helped. Thank you. Any questions from devotees? Anything that you would like to ask? Please do unmute yourself. Marge, that is a, that's a question that I would like. Go ahead, Sri Devi. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll, I'll go after you. Uh, please go ahead, Anasya. I'll wait for you. Marge, in the in the purport, your prophet uh, mentioned, and I think I've heard my husband just mentioned that a few days ago. To become, not that I want to become Marge, but I'm just trying to understand the, the philosophy behind it. To become God in the, next, in the next life, they must engage in devotional service of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So does that mean, Marge, that for demigods, they become God because they have to serve the Lord first? Like I'm trying to understand that statement by Sri Prabhupada. Well, he's saying that Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he clarified it in the following sentence. He says, people don't know whether they're going to become gods or dogs in the next life. Most of them, he said, will become dogs, except for one who engages in devotion to the Lord, they become godly. The word deva also refers to demigods. It also refers to a godly person as a deva. So it's a term, much. Yeah, it's a terminology that means that those who are saintly. Mm -hmm. Okay, I misunderstood. Thank you, Marsh, for, for clarifying that. Thank you. Yes, Sri Devi, go ahead. Um, Guru Maharaj, on this last, uh, just now about this uh, taking birth as dog or a god, for those who are materialists, Unless they engage in devotional service, however powerful they are, they will end up as dogs. Because uh, Srila Prabhupada writes, one of our prime ministers of India is now a dog in Sweden. He said that. So <laughs> my question is, if even if they hear Harinam, that is going to save them. Isn't it? I mean, even the least little thing that they do in devotional service, even passively hearing the holy name, it, would that be considered devotional service for them? There's two things. There's devotional service and then there's devotional service. It's called a Gyata Sukriti. Gyata Sukriti means unknowingly 
forming devotional service. That also has benefit. Also. So yeah, anything connected with the service of the Lord, whether it's done directly or indirectly, or directly or without conscious endeavor, is beneficial. Guruvaraj, may I just say some uh, incident if, with your permission, if you don't mind? Yeah. So yesterday I was in this train going to Kolkata. The train was fully crowded and I could see all the tension building up as all these ladies jostling for space. They're trying to get to work. The compartment is packed up like sardines in a tin. And I was thinking, poor things, you know, how they are suffering just for a mouthful of bread, waking up early morning, rushing to the city, and there's no way for me to preach. There's no way for me to say anything. There's no way for me to do anything. So I just took out my kartas and started singing Harinam. <laughs> I just started singing. I just started a uh, holy name. Of course, first with Prabhupada's Pranam Mantra, then Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya, and I just started singing. And slowly, slowly, because they're all basically pious Bengali ladies, you could see the tension draining out of their faces. They started nodding after a little bit, then smiling, and some started singing. And it was just amazing to see how much positive energy just by singing the holy name that uh, it transformed at least that little corner of the compartment for some time. I don't know how long that will stay, but people were smiling when they got off at the station. They were looking at me and smiling. And it was just so different compared to the atmosphere before I did any chanting. So I was thinking at least, the least I can do is just chant the holy name and somehow help these people. You should do that regularly. Just ride the train back and forth and just keep singing. <laughs> I mean, nice, nice service. <laughs> okay, Guru Bharat, with your mercy. That is such a wonderful thing, the service you did, Sri Devi. It's so amazing. Wow, yeah. I, I was just imagining the whole, I was, I was, just, I was trying to imagine the scene in my mind as you were describing. It's beautiful. I mean, my heart was just bursting with compassion. I was thinking, my gosh, what a life. What can I do? I'm so fortunate. I have received so much mercy. The least I can do is somehow get them to hear the holy name. That's the very least I can do. And of course, giving little prashadam to everybody, distribute a little prashadam. That's all. Amazing. Yeah. 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 The body take the opportunity to, to wake up the condition so it's whatever yeah when you have whatever the opportunity come nice very good Continue. Um, thank you wonderful thank you for sharing that Sri Devi really thank you yeah and I think that this will be very good because I connected with the Kolkata temple and I uh, told them, you know, this is the service I do. I give classes and also one of them said, we would like to connect you with our local congregational people because we would like people to come give classes and things like that. So I was thinking, oh, Krishna, thank you. I'm getting some purification through this also. <laughs> so that was nice. It was really difficult to see people struggling just to live, just to eat food. Prabhupada's mercy is so wonderful and we have received so much. And there's so much to do, you know. There's so much to do because people are suffering. Wow. Suffering so much. Yeah, the suffering is increasing as Kali Yuga continues to put its pressure on. It's uh, get really heavy. Really heavy. Some places in the world, really. And the people's lives are, their, their natural lifestyle is being very much challenged in so many ways by the present age. And it's only going to get worse. And there's only one solution, as Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati would say, there's only one problem in the world, lack of Krishna. Mm. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. And thank you, Shudhi. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Yes, Namrata, go ahead. Hare Krishna, my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada. 
firstly uh, i always get inspired by shridevi mata ji doing all this stuff <laughs> when she came to my place at that time also i think i i i am trained <laughs> to see her she can even whenever she is coming even in a cab or an auto rickshaw i am very much sure she is um uh, uh communicating with the uh, taxi driver or and and i'm sure she is giving prashad to the person i'm very sure about that and i really take up her quality and i have start doing that so yes um, i really bow down to that hari bol good, good, so good, one yeah. comment yes guru maharaj uh, yeah. one comment guru yeah nindi uh, about India is going to hell right now. It's calling the West really big. People are suffering tremendously. Everywhere people are suffering, but India, the suffering is really being compounded by because it's not in India the Western materialistic lifestyle is contrary to uh, nature and people uh, in the in the environment of India. So it's they're trying to supplant something that is not supplantable. It doesn't work. Prabhupad used to say, "West India's material advancement is artificial. They're not meant for that." So yeah, you'll see in India it's becoming crazy sometimes, <laughs> completely crazy. Yes, Kumar. Actually, they. uh i see a one generation who is um trying to cope up with and uh, stay on the baseline with what indian culture is and then um another culture which is just jumping rapidly towards the western western culture and there's a whole big bridge of confusion in between which is really uh creating a havoc uh that is what i feel at present in becoming quite clear the dichotomy now before it wasn't so clear yes um, yeah well we're everywhere in the world i really everywhere in the world krishna consciousness is the need they tell you about happy book predicted that every town and village he's, he's on a mission right now we're right at a very crucial part in his mission to bring it about change in a very fast way in many places and the tier life is getting worse christian spiritual life in many places is really starting to blossom it's uh, you know, it's becoming really clear really the dichotomy now between the two is so clear okay. very few people can actually say that they're happy in this world hardly anybody yes that recalls me with your comparison uh, you know of a uh, veterinarian vet, veterinarian doctor the vet doctor uh because the the animal he, he doesn't even know what is treated for who who is he, who is the person treating him so it, it has gone worse from a doctor to the vet uh, so yeah the condition is worse so actually my question here was gumaraj when guru uh, or acharyas they teach us principal things and we have to uh, sometimes understand and adjust uh, details according to our intelligence so according to the material conditions we are living in so how sometimes i'm not able to understand the uh, details uh, which should be adjusted how do we how do we get that intelligence uh, to understand those details hmm. well that's was answered by prabhupada he said it takes intelligence that was his answer 
You have to see the situation and you have to apply your intelligence to be able to understand what is the principle and what is the detail. Principles are foundational, they can't change. Details means how to apply the principles in time in different circumstances. And usually the Acharyas know how to do that because of their experience in bhakti. But for us, we have to learn that art. But you have to under yeah, you have to see, well, this is the situation, so you know. It's like sometimes you just can't pre preach to people directly or speak about spiritual topics, but you can give them for show. So you're doing the best situation. See the situation, try to understand it. And if you can't, then you ask, you have, might ask someone who's more experienced. Mm. Krishna consciousness is, don't try to formalize this process. If you try to formalize mm. Krishna, you'll, you'll become confused. It's very personal. It's very dynamic process. How to inject the spiritual message or spiritual principle into one's own life and into the lives of others. Not a, just a, you know, we have certain principles that we follow, rules and regulations, but that's in general. When it comes to dealing, then you have to understand how to apply that. That is called, that is called uh, vigyan. Gyan means knowledge. Vigyan means the uh, the application or the realization of that knowledge in practice. These are you have to use your intelligence. You have to you have to see how it was maybe it was done in a similar way in a, before in a similar situation. Mm -hmm. Yes, Baraj. The example is, uh, I'll give you the example of the opposite. Is that there was one veterinarian, he was training his, uh, his uh, successor to learn how to work on animals. So animals were coming in and he was training them and the, his, his student was watching. So one, uh, one horse came in and he had a big lump in his throat. So the veterinarian took a rubber mallet hammer and started hitting the lump. And it broke the lump up and the lump was gone and the horse was fine. So, you know, the uh, student is watching. So later on when he becomes a, more, you know, engaged in activities on his own now. A horse comes in and has got a big lump in his throat. So he does the same thing. He gets the hammer, starts hitting it. The horse is screaming and going wild. And his, his, uh, his teacher was there telling him, what are you doing? He said, I'm just doing what I saw you do. He said, you fool. That other horse had a watermelon stuck in his throat. And I was breaking it up so he could swallow it. So he's looking at this some a similar situation, but he's acting in the same way, but it requires a different approach. Well, that's Krishna consciousness. Can't always just, well, he did it that way, it's gonna work that way. You have to understand more clearly. Yes, Guru. Thank you very much for this clarification. The last mm -hmm. example you did, made was quite clarifying. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Maharaj, there is a comment uh, in the chat by Saurabh, if you remember him, the one that drove you back and forth when you were here. 
uh, he said, Hare Krishna Mahatma Saksa Mahamla Basin, so Saga Shishu Prabhupada. It was a very nice class. Thank you very much. It inspires me to be humble when preaching during the outreach programs. And I'm sure that came from your input, Sri Devi, of how you did on the train, <laughs> I'm guessing. Um, he said, Marsh, His Holiness Loknath Swami Marsh mercifully agreed to initiate me coming November. Please bless me so that I can serve the devotees, Guru Maharaj, Par Prabhupada, and the Guru Parampara nicely and eternally. Thank you, Hare Krishna Sora. Hare Krishna. Mm -hmm. He's going to be thrown in the fire in, the, in November. <laughs> <laughs> this one, um, his phone is like the Swami used to say, we'll throw them in the fire. <laughs> Fire of bhakti. Yes, Maharaj. The dross of material life. Yes, Maharaj. Maharaj, I, yes, Mother Tirta, go ahead, Mother. Do you have a question, Mother? Okay, she unmuted herself. It's okay, Mother. Maharaj, I have a question, and you was, um, and I think you touched upon in your class just now that there are some situations where people, uh, to the degree that we are happy materially, to that degree we experience misery, something like that you mentioned in your class, and there are situations, Marge, where people know uh, that it is going to be hellish, but at the same time. They really think, and I've heard people tell me this, that they really think that they have no problem coming back the next life and making it better, thinking that they know what the next life is going to be. How do we help people like that, Maharaj? Or is there any help that we can give them? Or just leave it to Krishna? They're thinking the next life is going to be better? Maharaj, I have literally have heard devotees, I shouldn't say devotees, but just, you know, newcomers or congregation members saying that, yes, to my ear. And, so all, Prabhupada, and all I can do is just drop my mouth open. So the Prabhupada explains when he responds to this question. Um, he does give that um, statement that if you don't finish in this life, then whatever you're doing in this life, you can pick up on where you start off in your next life. And that'll be arranged by Krishna to happen. But there's the other element which he Prabhupada makes clear. He said, whatever is blocking you in this life will also be there in your next life. You still have to overcome that block, whatever it is. Whatever that attachment is, whatever that uh, whatever that's co causing you to take birth again, you're still going to have to face that. So there's no guarantee that, you know, next life is going to be better in that sense. You still have to, because wherever you go, you take your attachments with you. <laughs> Hi, Krishna so, Maharaj. Thank you so much for that wonderful lecture. It's always the light, you know, everything is going worse and worse, but your lectures are always light and we can see forward. Thank you so much. Hare Krishna Maharaj. I love to hear things from Krishna. I hope. Yeah, and Prabhupada said, don't depend on the future. Now is the time to become Krishna conscious. So, Maharaj, if if the blocks that we have in this life will continue in the next life and at the same time where we pick up where we quote unquote dropped off this life will be picked up next life then are we not in the same battle march again trying to figure out what are our blocks uh yeah it'll be problem it'll be, it'll be apparent we can even see in this life. But the idea is the process of, of bhakti is, is a continuous process of making advancement to the perfectional stage of love of God. Until one do, does that, they have to go through the process, purifying themselves from their attachments and developing their attraction for Krishna. So Death doesn't stop that process. It just 
it just puts that process in a different situation with a different you know set of circumstances but it goes on life after life and there's also i mean you could also fall back from where you are in this life in the next life if so if the situation say you get a good situation in your next life and you decide to use that in order to uh, enjoy krishna conscious and enjoy material life that by by performing devotional service one gets a a uh, birth in the next life in a rich in a, a rich uh mercantile family or a uh, aristocratic family or a very pious family but it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to go forward you just get a good situation based on where you were from the previous life That's, life's continuous it doesn't stop at death Death is simply a, an injunction, a junction where you, you know, give up one particular body and take on another one. Because this body is like a, like a garment. It gets worn out after a while and you have to give it up. But you're still there. <laughs> and Marsh, and how can we... Um actively uh, really recognize or catch our blocks well the, it's easy when you're in association with devotees they help you they, they association with devotees is more like a mirror to help you understand a little bit about more about your own practice of devotion it also gives you a chance to make progress by serving and associating with devotees so that's the the most effective method. You can also sometimes we just uh, we also ask a close friend, you know, where's my block? What's my Maya? You know, Bhakti Tirtha Swami used to do that. He would do that as a, as a uh, what do they call that? A, a, a seminar workshop. Workshop, he would do it as yeah. a workshop. And it would be like a shock to devotees to really uh, go deep and figure it out. <laughs> he was very good in doing that. Yeah, that's a quick way. That's a lot of mercy. If you have a false ego, then that false ego gets challenged. And if you uh, want to get rid of your false ego, there's one way to do it. <laughs> And if you want to keep your false ego, you can resist it, and then your false ego gets bigger. Yes, Maharaj. I, I was. I'm, I'm remembering the, those days where he had to used to, to do that to us and make us <laughs> check our false ego it's and good. speak about our blocks. It was in one session too. He did it in Chicago when he was there. Well, was it well received, Maharaj? Or what devotees? Uh, there was a few who backed out of the program. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just normal. Not everyone will be willing to go through that. But some people are actually afraid to see what's wrong with them. And Marge, why is that so? Because then they have to change. <laughs> change or suffer. So the fear of change is also scary. Wow. Yeah. Wow. I like I like change because change helps you to somebody see the same situation and from a different angle.
Yes, Marge. Yeah. Fear of change. Wow. Thank you, Marge. Thank you. Any other mm -hmm. questions from Devo? <clears throat> I'm sorry, Marge. No, yes, Sri Devi. Yeah. Go ahead, Sri um, Devi. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Maharaj, we are all trying our level best to actually come out of this false ego and come to real ego, which is I'm nothing but a servant of Krishna. But um, how do we help uh, devotees who have very grandiose ideas about themselves, have a tremendous sense of entitlement, and they think everybody should give them respect and you know give them honor, and they're something very special and so on. Um, should we leave them alone or uh, should we try to help them? <laughs> Usually, if someone's in illusion so so great, we just leave it open. <laughs> unless you unless you write on in a very timely way, know how to say something. But that's not easy to see the situation to find that time when it's most appropriate. Otherwise, they're going to just write you off as a critic. That's it. Better to just to work on your own Krishna consciousness for a relationship to people like that. Deal with people with people who are more open, more interested. Right, right. Yes, Guru Maharaj. The reason I ask is because I'm actually dealing with a patient. I mean, one of my clients who's who's a child, and the mother is having a tremendous difficulty because the father is like that. So he's inciting the child to become rebellious, unsubmissive, and the child gets suspended from school and so many things because the father is uh, just uh, goading and encouraging the child to be like him. So that's where the problem is coming. Yeah. What to do? <laughs> Work on it. Thank you, Mother. Okay, so thank you very much. Thank you so much, much was for a really nice class for us to really meditate on right before the day of Janmashtami here. And we thank the devotees for joining us. March, would you like to end with a round of chanting or do you have an appointment? Uh, I do have a class this evening and I have to do something. Like some people are going to meet me and that is fine, Marge. It's okay. No problem. I just wanted to just ask you. That's fine. Thank you, Marge. No problem. And we thank all the devotees for joining us. Vanchaka Pribyascha, Kripas in the Bay of Acha, Patitanam Pavanabhya, Vaishnavabhya, Namo Namaha, Shila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. His Holiness Chandramali Swami, Ki Jai. Wishing everyone a very wonderful Janmashtami tomorrow, wherever you're at. Thank you.